hi guys in this video we are going to be looking at how we can easily add notes effects on our backdrop but this time around it's going to be with photoshop this is twisted creative allow me my name if it's your first time on this channel please do me a favor please do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button not only by hitting that subscribe button also ring that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the next video without wasting much time let's jump into it Here is one of the snoot image. I created this. But in our next video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I created this. And it's very, very, very simple, very easy. So right now, we have this snoot effect, the one I downloaded this. Then we we'll have this image, this image that I can actually apply all this stuff. So we are going to be starting by this let's say let's make use of this or let's say let's choose an image first okay let's take this image first and see which one is going to fit this particular image then let's if we look at this look at this and this 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 I, I think we should just take a look at how this is going to look like on this image <laughs> never mind the size you can just spread it out doesn't matter the quality sometimes cannot really tell but i can see it kind of distorted by dragging it holding my shift and dragging it together pulling it together then we we'll have something like this just enter okay then all you have to do is just you can just go to the blend mode first and check out the one that is going to suit you as in at your own preference so let's say i can see that color dodge color bond is is looking fine then let's go to darken color lighting this one is almost like you see having the background on it lighting screen and all that they are having the white background then if you check overlay overlay is still amazing then soft light soft light is not that bad but it's still kind of having the background let's just say okay instead of wasting much time let's just go to this color bond i think this color bond is going to be okay then if you take a look at this you can see the the, the lights running across the image it does not really make sense you know having the the stuff running across your image having some lines and some kind um, wanted light on your image so all you have to do here is just for you to select the image under and go to your quick selection tool then just have to drag around your image then it's going to separate your image from that background stuff then look at what we have here we have a very rough selection here which is not too bad and in short you don't need to be that precise then let's see i think it's not too bad then we are going to remove if possible remove the downside of it but anyway it's not going to affect it let's just go ahead and reselect the snoot the snoot image so this is what we have here now just for us to go and um, we can choose our lasso tool if you wish then just right click and look for feather then you can feather with four or five let's say four hit ok then you just hit delete like once or twice let's say one two you can see it is no longer on the face of this image on the surface so if you take a look now it's just like something that is neatly removed but it's kind of rough selection as you know for a very fast way to do it but if you want to do it the other way it's still also applicable like you can add a layer marks to this and start doing it but right now we are not done with this work we just have to choose our marquee tool triangle uh, rectangular marquee tool and drag around just make capture a little part of the background and feather it with like 300 depending on the resolution you are working with i'm working with 600 resolution then you can delete like twice or three times 
So have it deleted three times. Then you have to see the transition between the floor and the background. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? So like this now, I think we have this thing like you can see go down there and turn the opacity down. It will look more interesting. This is before, this is after, this is before, this is after. Isn't it simple? It is. Okay, with this same image, let's just try out something else, like bringing in this background to that the same image. Then we just have to rotate it, hold your shift to balance it up and expand it to however. But just make it stick to the background. Don't allow it to be on the floor. So let's go and do something great here. So we have it like this. But before we continue with this one, let's just close this other one off so that it's not going to be appearing for us. Then the next thing you do here, just let's go for, for the, as you can see, let's go for the uh, blend mode. The blend mode, as you can see, we have this multiply, color bond, and all that. In short, they are okay. Overlay is not too bad, but for this, I just believe color, let's say multiply is okay. Then, the next thing we do here is just to, for us to see where it has affected on the image. The other way we can use in doing this is that you just have to go to your layer mask, this, this uh, rectangle with rectangular shape here with a circle, which is the layer mask. You can just put it on and you have it like this. But this, this time around, you are not going to invert. You are not going to use your control I to invert, but you are going to toggle between the background color and the foreground color, which is use your X, X to toggle between the background color and foreground color. Then make sure your foreground color is black. Then pick up your brush and target the areas. Make sure your opacity and flow is at 100. Then just wipe it away from where it is affecting. But as you can see, the other idea is faster than this. So depending on you, which, whichever, whichever way you prefer. So like it's affecting this area. So as you can see, we are done with this image, but there's something I find out here. I find out that the edge of this stuff just got finished here. It's not supposed to be like that. Then if you feel you can do something about it, you can still spread it out. And But I think it's too late because I have the background erased already on the image. So if you drag it now, you notice that you have patches, patches all over it. So right now, we are going to focus on some other one. So we have to go to this other image. And let's bring in something like uh, this. I think this is OK. Then if you pull this thing to this image, and you can see something. <laughs> it's looking odd. But there's no need to worry about it. If you put it like this, like this, it's not bad. But I feel if we have a little distortion for this. It's going to be better than this. Let's say, like, if we have it at the edge of this wall, or let's say, just hit transform, use your control T to bring in your transform, and then right click and choose distort. So this distort, you can just drag it anyway. If you understand perspective, you know what I'm doing. This is a kind of perspective. You're going to look it, make it look like a wall. So we have it like this now. But before we start duplicating, just let, have to delete this one first. We have to make sure we choose our blend mode so that we're not going to, we are not, we'll not be doing it several times. So let's choose a blend mode for this. Think difference, divide. I think divide is okay. Let's just take divide for this and use Ctrl J 
to duplicate it. So let's duplicate it and bring it down a bit. Bring it down a bit. And as you can see, this one, this guy has to be on this image. Then the other one is not. Then alternatively, if you want to blow them up, if you want to increase your size, you can see select both of them by using holding your shifts and select both of them. Then you can pull them up a bit depending on how you want it. So we we'll have it like this. Then you can see both of them is kind of has climbed the image. So in order for you to get rid of them, you have to select the first or select the image and go to your object selection tool and drag it around the image and boom, you have the selection very fast. Then all you have to do is like, as you can see, it's not well selected here, but it doesn't really matter. You can just roughly select it here like this. Then any other place can be taken care of later or leave it that way. Then let's say you can feather with, let's say like four, then hit OK. Then you are not going to be deleting on the image after, say, after getting your selection. You go to the, the effects. Then you press delete like twice or three times. So I'm doing it one, two. So I have it removed for the first one. Then I have to select the other one and do the same thing. I have to press one, two. So you have the back one removed. So if you if you remove this selection now, if you deselect now and you notice that you have a very clean job. Um, so this is what we have here. If you select the top one and uh, hold your control or your shift to add the next one, then use your control G to put them in a group. Then you can easily put off these layers and see the before and after. This is before. This is after. This is before. This is after. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? So this is a very fine way you can organize your background, make them look more interesting. Then there are some other stuff like this. You can just, let's just take this one to this uh, baby and, you know, you can just take it up and shut these other ones down. Then you expand it like this. Then you can also bring it close if you want. You can hold down your shift and pull it closer. Then we have something like this. Then after doing such, you go to your blend mode and at least multiply is okay also. Or you can say, let's see how divide will look. And let's say divide is going to be okay also. Let's say, let's take divide for this. And as you can see, we have a very fine already good looking then you select the image then use your your object selection to then drag around it same thing goes there so we have it like this then you can just hit delete or if you check you have it around here and all you I don't think it's going to cut anyhow there just feather with four and hit that effect and delete so you have your clean image like two times so you have your image as clean as it could be so if you deselect now remove all the selection you find out that you have a very decent and fine image but talking about the line the line under it like this you can you can remove it by eliminate it by using your using your rectangular tool and just drag somewhere around and feather with like, let's say 300 should be okay, then hit okay. Then press delete. One, two, three. So <laughs> let's say for the line is no longer there. So you can see the transition between the background and the image is a very fine one. So that's it for today on how you can easily add smooth effects on your backdrop 
in Adobe Photoshop. If you find it interesting, helpful, and useful, hit that like button. And also, leave a comment below telling us how it has helped you and where we need to improve on. Like I said earlier, if you are new on this channel, please, please do me a favor. Do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Not only by hitting that subscribe button, also ring that notification bell so that you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching today's video, Creative Pro. Keep on creating. Please stay creative. Continue creating. For now, bye. See you in the next video. Bye.